And welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics of interest to libraries. Um, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and that is posted to our website for you to watch later. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where all of, you can see um, all of our archives. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share um, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone who you think might be interested in any of our topics, they can sign up for our, our um, live shows Wednesday mornings or go back and watch any of our archives later. Um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, uh, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, anything that we maybe think of interest to libraries. Um, that's really our only criteria is, is something library related, uh, something the libraries are doing, something we think they could be doing, um, new new products where our services and programs we're offering here via the Nebraska Library Commission um, and things going on elsewhere in the country. Um, we also cover all types of libraries. Um, we are the Nebraska Library Commission, so we are the state agency here in the state of Nebraska for all libraries in the state, public, academic, K-12, special, correctional facilities, um, anything out there. So you will find a huge range of topics on our show. Um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do presentations talking about things that we are specifically offering here but we also bring in guest speakers and that's what we have this morning on the line with us is Dana Bamba who is from the Campbell County Public Library System in Virginia as you can see from our slides right there good morning Dana good morning Good morning. And um, their library has gone through quite a bit of changes um, in a few years <laughs> of moves and and uh, it, it's been quite a uh, um, a chaos, chaotic situation, maybe? <laughs> Organized chaos. <laughs> Organized chaos. Awesome. <laughs> um, and she's going to tell us how they pulled off this move. Um, one thing we'd like to do, um, if you, anyone could, if you could, um, we're interested who is attending today. So if you type into your question section um, where you're coming from and your um, position and your organization, are you a library director, staff, uh, board member, whatever, just so we um, get a little idea of who um, we're talking to this morning. Um, but other than that, I will um, pass it on to you, Dana, to take it away with your presentation. Okay, thank you. So as you can see here, we have a blueprint on your screen. This is the blueprint for our building. I wanted to make sure that I could show off our beautiful <laughs> space. Um, I have some awesome pictures, <clears throat> but first I wanna briefly go through the history of the library to give you an idea of how we evolved. So let me, oh, give me one moment. There we go. Okay, so this is the blueprint for the Timbrook Library, which is a branch of the Campbell County Public Library System. It's also mm -hmm. the busiest branch library. We rival um, the main library quite often with our statistics, which is a great accomplishment for such a small library. So to give you some background, the Timbrook Women's Club was a prominent women's organization in this area for many, many years um, during the 20th century. They are no longer active as of, I believe, 20, 20 years ago, maybe. Um, but in the meantime, they had created the library out of a need that they saw in their community. So they were given a small building by the Witten family who owned a funeral home on one of our busiest commercial roads and they had this small little white building, I'll show you a picture of it in a few minutes, that they gave to them to use. They were open 15 hours a week. It took two years to get enough money and donations of books to be able to open the library. They opened on February 5th, 1965. And here's a picture from 1964 of a donation they had received of talking books from the Timberlake Lions Club. And I will note I have eight scrapbooks from the Timberlake Women's Club, so I was able to find original documents and newspaper articles, um, which for somebody who really likes those physical archives, I was tickled pink to be able to have this material. Um, we've digitized it in the last couple months, but I will definitely be keeping those originals. Yeah, I love that it's just, you can see that it's the actual um, 
clippings cut up and <laughs> cut off out of the papers and tasted there. <laughs> Oh yes, the scrapbooks are beautifully done. They have all of their notes. I went through and I flagged each time the library was mentioned, so I'll have little tidbits of information as we go along. Um, one awesome. of the neat things was they had, instead of a book drop, they had a back porch that they kept a plastic wastebasket, and they would empty that daily. So you left your books in this wastebasket under a covered porch. Um, this is what the library looked like, this little tiny building here. There were three rooms. They had one for fiction, one for reference, and one for children's. <clears throat> they had about 1,200 books to start out. And they had, in the reference section, they were given a set of 1964 Britannica encyclopedias. Um, and in the children's collection, they had donated classics as well as new books. And here, I wanted to explain to you kind of what happened with the library as it transitions. So during this time, they had this building, but they were looking for something bigger, looking to grow. And that's kind of the theme throughout today's presentation. <laughs> um, so they had to close this library because the city of Lynchburg annexed the property. Um, the city of Lynchburg annexed several properties over the course of several decades and grew the city. But because of that, the Timbrook Library no longer received funding from the Campbell County Public Library System in the county. So they closed in 1977. They were able to reopen with a bookmobile a few years later. So let me show you. We're going to go through these pictures pretty fast because there is a lot of information toward the end. <clears throat> so we have our Campbell County Public Library bookmobile, um, and this is what took over once the Timbrook Library closed. And this went from the Timbrook Women's Club's control to the Campbell County system. So when they closed the old library, they sold all of the books and materials, and they put the money back into the Timbrook Women's Club treasury for their next project. It was very, very successful um, for the time that it was open. Unfortunately, these circumstances were out of their control. Um, but we then spent decades following this, trying to get a standalone uh, full service library. So the bookmobile would travel back and forth from the main library to Waterlick Road and the Waterlick um, Shopping Plaza, which is why you can see it says it's the Waterlick branch, until it died. When the bookmobile died, they put it up on blocks in the Waterlick Plaza and continued to use it um, to provide that need to the people in this part of the community. Um, <laughs> Work work that. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> we, we've been um, known in this area for working with what we had for many <laughs> years. Um, then we moved into the Brookville Middle School, which is the local middle school. I could probably walk to it from the current building. It's very close. Um, they had two classes, or classes, two classrooms that they let us use until they needed the space in the early 90s. I don't have a lot of information about that time period. That was a time period that was hard for me to get statistics for, um, simply because the women's club just took such remarkable records. And then as we were moving around, a lot of that was more based on people's memories, which there are so many people in our community who remember each one of these situations, um, but just trying to nail them down. It's fun. So once we move from the Brookfield Middle School, um, if you look at the second picture down that shopping center, that's where we moved to in the early 90s, and that's where we stayed until December of 2014. So that's where I started my career with the Campbell County Library. Um, we, let me turn my notes over here. <clears throat> so to give you a brief description, we're going to not even mention the down, the um, picture on the bottom. It's beautiful, and we will talk about it soon. So we're going to move on to the branch in the shopping center. We were next to a Food Lion grocery store and a Verizon. And the easiest way to explain where the library was located was to say it's on Timberlake Road, one of the major shopping um, centers, and it's behind the McDonald's. That was the easiest way to explain where it was because otherwise people would just drive by and not see it. Not to say it wasn't busy, it was very busy. So this branch, you can see we have our circulation desk. Behind the circulation desk were the big pictures hanging on the post there, that's a picture of the library. And the desk right there, that's where I would sit. That was the reference, collection development, everything the public services librarian did, I did from that desk. And then we had one, two, three, we had four computers on one side, two on the other, so we only had six computers available. 
we had about five rows of shelving of adult fiction and nonfiction. We had about a dozen tables to be used, and then we had our children's section. So as you can see, this is the entire library. So that's one, two, three, four pictures, and I can give you the entire library. Um, you can see a door at the very back of this picture. That's where the staff bathroom and staff um, we'll say program room slash storage closet was. That's where our tutors would tutor um, our literacy students. So in four pictures, I can show you the entire 4,000 square foot library. Now, if you see anything in these pictures as far as signage, programs, questions about them, anything like that that you want more information about, please let me know. I will be more than happy to tell you about all of those things outside of this presentation um, because there were several things I realized in these pictures that I was doing that didn't apply, but people might like to know about. For example, this is a Band Books uh, Week auction, so if anyone wants to hear more about that, let me know. <clears throat> Okay, so some of the things we needed in this space that we did not have was meeting space for us and for the public, private meeting space, um, offices for our librarians, our children's programming manager, our literacy office. We needed a workroom. Any of the work done by the circulation staff was done behind the desk. Um, the circulation desk was very small. Sometimes we had three people behind the desk and they didn't really fit. Um, we needed, I think I mentioned a lunchroom for the staff. That was not something we had either. Luckily enough, we all lived close by to the library for most of the time that we were there, the four staff members and I um, that ran that library for the most part. Um, we lived close by, so we'd go home for lunch. That proved to be a problem once I moved and I didn't want to eat out all the time. Okay, and the biggest thing about this library was we needed more square footage. This is 4,000 square feet. Okay, <clears throat> so let me tell you about the groundbreaking in the building. And before I do this, if you look at the um, blueprint here, you can kind of tell that we had all of our needs met. Um, you can see on the left hand side there's a tutor room, there's a conference room, there's an office, that office is the literacy office, there's a closet in the literacy office for storage for the circulation staff, there's a glassed in work area, I have an office now, and there's a lunch room next to my office. That is all the space that we needed before in the old library that we didn't have. On the other side of the building we had the meeting room, the meeting tutor room is actually our great big program room. We have a quiet room for people to work. We have access to four bathrooms now instead of two. And this is blocking the children's room, but in the back up where it says the ground, there's a great big children's room as well. <clears throat> so with this library, all of our needs were met. There's always room for expansion and growth. Um, I say there's always room for it. There's always a need for it. You just have to wait for um, your community to be ready and you have the funding for it. And that's something we'll talk about with this groundbreaking. So this building, the goal was $2 million. I believe at last count, we ended up spending 1.6 to $1.8 million on this building. The original drawing is seen here, and the library does look almost exactly like this picture. Um, it does not have the dormers on the top, um, but everything else is pretty close. It's very much designed to be a part of the park that it's sitting in. The piece of property that we finally were able to get for the library was part of the Timbrook Park owned by the Campbell County um, Parks and Recreation, or Campbell County. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We spent decades looking for land or a building. We came close a couple of times to purchasing a building or two. There was an old Saturn dealership um, before my time here that they were negotiating that didn't work out. There was another building owned, I think, by a pharmaceutical company that didn't work out. That was right next door to the old library in the shopping center, which would have been, it would have made for a much easier move. We literally could have walked the books up the hill and been there in five minutes. Um, but that's okay. This is only about 1.4 miles. Miles, I believe, away from the old building. So when I say old building, 
I mean the shopping center, new building, the uh, new construction. Since I was only here for two of our buildings, I tend to think in old or new, not that there were actually five locations. So please let me know if you have any questions as we go through. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about here as well, oh, we can talk about it here, um, is the funding that we raised for this library. It was partially a HUD grant. It was partially the recipro reciprocal rent from the shopping center. So the money that the county knew that they would be spending in rent for the shopping center, they turned around and put that towards this new building. So in a couple of years, the building will have paid for itself in terms of the money the county put in because they wouldn't be paying that rent anymore to the shopping center and the organization that owned it. <clears throat> we also raised private and um, public donations. So we received donations from several large companies in the area. Um, they then had naming rights. So we had a printing company make a donation. We had a stone company. And all of these places have plaques throughout the library acknowledging their donation. The size of the plaque and the size of the room that the plaque is in front of the signage um, depends on how much they gave. So there was a chart for that. Um, we did receive a very large donation from the transformer company Delta Star, and they had the option of naming rights, I believe, due to the size donation, um, but they did not do that since we remained Timbrook, um, which I believe is a combination of Timberlake and Brookville. Timberlake is an area of Campbell County with a very, very high population, um, and Brookville is the school district that's closest by. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some of the donors um, that we had were uh, Progress Printing, a local printing company, Boxley, the Stone Group, a couple of banks, the Bank of the James and the First, um, First National Bank of Alta Vista. Uh, to name a few, our Friends Group as well made a sizable donation. This is probably a good time to mention the Friends Group. The Friends of the Timbrook Library have been around for about 48 years. They, so they've been around since almost the beginning. And they have been fundraising for this building for decades. This is one of the big success stories of the Timberlake District of Campbell County because the community had wanted this building for a long time. It had needed this building. It's a very, very busy library. And the money that was raised took a long time. So they used to hold uh, tractor pulls and fundraisers in the Timber Park for this building. Little did they know that they would actually be building their library where they were holding these events. Um, to give you an idea of some of the numbers for our library, the Timberlake region serves about 23,000 of the 50,000 people in Campbell County. The Timbrook Library in 2015, oh, I'm sorry, 2015 is when they were building the building. I said 2014. In 2015, the small library in the shopping center served over 50,000 citizens, loaned over 50,000 items, and offered 65 community programs. We also were the location for about 82% of the literacy volunteers through our literacy uh, program. They served adult learners of basic literacy skills and English as a second language. So we were very, very busy. <clears throat> So this $2 million got us a beautiful building and took a very long time to raise. The bulk of it was raised in about a decade. The library director um, who came in in 2000, I'm thinking 2008, I believe. I don't want to, yes, I believe it was 2008. Um, one of her goals in coming in was to finish raising the money for this project and see it through to fruition. So it took about a decade to finish that fundraising. Um, and I have a quote here for you about this building. Um, Nan Carmack, who is our former library director of Campbell County, she just uh, relocated to the Library of Virginia. So we wish her well, but she said, this facility is a community success story demonstrating what citizens, volunteers, businesses, and government agencies can do when working collaboratively toward meeting a local need and a common goal. I think this is a pretty big accomplishment for this community. 
So to show yeah, you our yeah. support. Yeah. I was going to say Go that amazing dedication there of the community spending that much time because they wanted a new building and just keeping keep going at it for so many years. Oh, yes. And it took a very long time. It depended on um, the economy. So I should note, actually, um, before we continue, the original plan for this building was a community center with a library, with meeting space, with, I believe, a gym. Like they had this idea of having this big community center and it was slated to cost three or four times more than what the mm -hmm. library turned out to cost. Um, but then they decided we need to be realistic with the economic downturn that took place around 2009. They had to kind of draw back and make some tough decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have some patrons who still come in who talk about how many years they waited for this, how many years they helped. I didn't realize for a while, I thought, oh, they've been raising money, you know, 10, 20 years. Not, a, you know, that's a long time, not a, you know, big deal. And then I had a patron tell me about when the library opened and how they had been looking for a standalone building since the beginning. So I started doing my research. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's more than 40 years. You know, wow. that's longer than a lot of my patrons have been alive. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this, and if you look at this picture, um, this is just a small, small portion of the people who came to the groundbreaking. Um, I can't wait to show you the picture of the grand opening. That was amazing. So I'm going to move along a little quicker here just so we can get to the nuts and bolts of the moving, which I think is the biggest part of probably what you all want to know. So I will say, I got to turn one of those shovels and that was a really awesome experience because not every librarian gets to say that they got to build a building and they got to move a library. And this was my second or third year working here. So it was only the very, very beginning of my career, which I'm hoping means that I learned a lot. So that if this ever comes up as an opportunity for me again, then I can take those things that I learned. Um, I'd like to put in a little plug here for our former branch manager, Judy Gerlinger. Um, this is one of the uh, slides that she had written. She had lost her voice due to cancer. Um, so she said, it's really happening after all the years of dreaming, planning, working. We're here celebrating the second best day. So for her, it was the second best day because the best day would be the grand opening. Unfortunately, um, Judy passed away two months after the grand opening or the, um, not the grand opening, the groundbreaking. So she didn't get to see that. Um, we do have a plaque in her honor in the library, as well as a community funded leaf on our donation tree for her um, and a silver shovel, which is really adorable hanging on our tree. So this is an in progress picture of the library. And I will note all of these pictures say photography by Toby. Um, Toby Robertson is a local photographer who took pictures for us, not only for this, but for different events and the grand opening, different library programs. And he donated his time and he would give us the pictures afterwards and the copyright to it, which is wonderful. <clears throat> so this is the front of the, well, the front is on the right hand side. You can see the pillars for the porch. So I would drive by here every day on my way home from work and I would look to see how much more did they do. So when the walls went up, it seemed to just go so quickly. I didn't understand a lot about the foundational part. I just felt like it was taking forever. But they broke ground in March of 2015. We started moving the library December 1st of 2015. So this was built in a very, very short amount of time and there were no delays. I was informed by a colleague that most library buildings see an average of two to four months of delays. We didn't have any, which is amazing. Okay, the moving process. So at any point, if you have questions, um, just speak up if you have audio. If not, um, just send your questions and let me know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone <clears throat> who wants to, you can type in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we'll see them there and get them answered. I am going to just briefly look over my notes here to make sure that I'm on track for you. I don't want to miss anything. Okay. okay. So the moving process. We did not hire a company. We did this with Public Works. My staff and Public Works, they're amazing. Um, I had one, two, three, four, five, six people who helped move in addition to myself and the director from the library. And then Public Works, I think, probably had either four or five guys who helped us and a box truck, <laughs> and we moved the entire library. Um, we went from 4,000 square feet to 6,000. 
we have some extra shelving that we received from another library that was donated. So we had a few extra aisles and things to put in. And I will show you some pictures of how we moved the library um, and more of those logistics in a moment. Um, but I wanted to go over a little bit of some of the pros and cons of the move. I asked one of my staff members to give me some of her insight. The biggest thing she said was the team building behind this. We all got to be in the same place at the same time, working the same hours for a month. So the entire month of December, we worked from 8.30 to 5 and took an hour lunch together. So we got to eat together. Um, the biggest thing they were excited about was getting to wear yoga pants to work every day for a month. Um, so we were comfortable, <laughs> we were active. <laughs> well, many, if you think about yeah. many times, you're in the public eye. So not only do you have to make sure you're professionally dressed, you have to make mm -hmm. sure you're acting in a professional way at all times. Your customer service has to be um, impeccable. And one of the things that she had also mentioned was they could be themselves without the public watching them and really have fun with each other and get the work done. Um, and these ladies are all, I mean, of varying ages and abilities, and they moved books like there was no tomorrow. They were so excited about this. That I feel like that really fueled our energy. I started wearing my Fitbit during this month. <laughs> we were averaging between 10,000 and 17,000 steps a day. It was awesome. And we all felt great because of it. Um, so some of the things that she talked about that were wonderful were um, everything was new. So yes, the sh not all the shelving was new and we were moving all of our books, but the circulation desk was new, the tables and chairs, the offices, everything was new. And for a library that hadn't seen anything new in a really long time, this was really, really awesome. Um, another thing she said was being able to collaborate together on how to decorate, um, where to put things. I really left a lot of those things up to them if they were in the workroom where that was their space. It's not my space, it's their space. I had an office to decorate, so I was happy as can be as well. Um, they really were able to collaborate. Um, some of the things now we talked about, or I had mentioned in my description, the bumps and bruises along the way, so I wanna briefly mention some of those. Um, the only physical bruises, I would guess, um, came from some unsteady book carts. And let me see. Okay, these are the book carts. These were made by Public Works. They have, let me see, tiny little wheels. If you see those wheels, it's kind of oh. like a Jeep that can roll over easily. Um, so these tended to fall over. Luckily, we only, we only dropped two. They <laughs> that do were look bad. taller than usual. The right, you, yeah, as you can see in this actually picture over the right, the traditional book, library book carts. Yes, so yeah. let me pull this up. Okay, so Nina in the background there is not that tall. This was, I think, the vantage point. Um, but these, I'm 5'3". I could see over these, but not by much. So they were mm. tall. <laughs> um, but they were really, really useful because they could be rolled up onto, some of them we had to kind of wrap in tape so they wouldn't fall over. Um, but they were rolled up onto the box truck and they were taken to the library and the Public Works guys would roll them back out for us. And they did the bulk of that heavy lifting for us. Um, we had one almost fall on one of my colleagues. <laughs> we caught it, thankfully. Um, I accidentally pushed one backwards, like I was standing in front of it doing something and it fell backwards. It came very, very close to breaking the picture glass window, like the great big shopping center window, which would have been really bad because that was the end of our lease. So it would have cost us a lot of money to fix. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing about that was when it fell over, it was lunchtime and Public Works was all like, they were all eating their lunch, which was nice for them too. They got to spend time together during those days that they were working with us. And they all stood up really quickly to make sure that I wasn't under the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really nice. It was a bonding between departments as well because we had so IT this here. Made, they, so they custom made these just for this um, project, for this yeah. move. I think they made them before the move and we stored them in one of the basements of one mm -hmm. of the buildings as we mm -hmm. needed them because we had used them a couple years before to switch some collections around. Ah, uh, okay. That's what I was going to ask: is what happened to them now? Af you know, after the the big move, they're just there, just for other potential. Oh, they're in the basement, like that of my building. <laughs> yeah, they're in the basement of this building, so that if we do need them again, we can cool. use them. Yeah. yeah. 
which is really convenient. I will mention here as well, if you have someone who's really good with logistics, I can't wrap my head around this, but I had a staff member who did, so she instructed everyone. All of these books are not random. Everything was put on the cart in an order so that when you put it back up on the shelf, it's in order. I honestly can't wrap my head around it, so I stopped trying. I had other things to worry about. <laughs> So if you have someone who's really good with logistics and you want to task them with figure out how to put these books on the cart so that when they come off they are in order, that will save you so much time. This is also why we did not use volunteers to put the books on and off the carts. We thought we were going to until we realized how complicated it was and we really didn't have the time at the end of the month to make sure that they were all in order if a problem arose. So we labeled all the carts with a piece of paper on top of each one of these um, with the range and we were able to get them back on the shelves very quickly this way. Two people worked per cart so that you didn't have constant bending which caused fatigue for some of our um, staff members. And then towards the end of putting the books on the shelves, we ended up having to do a lot of shifting. That was one of the cons that um, my staff member gave me. Um, poor Rachel, she did most of the shifting and she was amazing with it because every time she got done, there was more to shift because our shelves just filled up so much more quickly than we expected. Um, we do still have pretty tight space with our, um, our shelving, but like I had mentioned before, we had to scale back our expectations with the economy and we had to build the size building that we could afford in the um, with the donations that we had. Um, so while I would have loved to build, you know, a two story, great, big, expansive building, um, that was just not what we could do at this time with our community. So we did what we could, which not to say isn't wonderful and beautiful. We have so much space that we're very, very grateful for. And I will um, share with you a little bit of information about that meeting space that was added on um, in a minute here. But this room is one of the meeting rooms. It seats 50 people. So let's go backwards a little bit here so I can show you around. This is the front of our large print, which we put by the door. It's one of the things that my staff members had the option of doing was to think through where things would go. And someone suggested the large print should go closest to the door because the age range of people who use large print are usually people who are older and less mobile. So they shouldn't have to walk as far. In the old library, so the shopping center library, they had to walk to the back of the building to the darkest corner of the building to get their large print. So now it's in a well-lit area right in the front. Behind that, we did uh, fiction and nonfiction. And then I haven't mentioned YA yet. YA had their own section in the shopping center, and they ended up with an entire corner of the library for themselves in this building. So we don't have a room for teens, but we do have a section with a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like a coffee house table, like the high top table. This is our juvenile section, and we have some extra shelves on the left-hand side as well. Moving to this building, we did um, take the opportunity to weed our collection as well to make sure that we were moving the most current material. We hadn't weeded um, a couple of the sections in a little while, so we took this opportunity to do that. The room in the back of this picture is the children's programming office. Our children's programming managers, we have two of them for the county for four libraries. They travel from library to library. One of them serves um, birth through five years old, the other serves five years old to 18. And we wanted them to have a space in this library so that they each had a space and office to work through and they share them, um, but then they had space to work. Okay, let me check my notes here to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Ah, the children's room. Okay, this picture I took yesterday pretty much right now looks the same as it did when we moved aside from some wear and tear on the little green seats um, the company we got the green seats from i think it was harris in roanoke virginia they've recently gotten an updated version that's easier to clean i love these seats i don't recommend the cloth i recommend getting um i think they have vinyl now they are much easier to clean um, some of those little things you learn along the way <clears throat> And then I will mention because the room looks so beautiful right now with the walls, let's talk about paint for a minute. Um, 
not everyone is well versed in paint. I certainly wasn't until we were working with this building. I strongly recommend investing in a paint that's wipeable. So I believe that would be semi-gloss um, or there might be another one, but please do that. You do not want flat paint. It makes for uh, wear and tear very quickly. We've repainted this children's room as well as our conference room already. So I would um, definitely recommend you do not want flat paint. That's my soapbox. I'm getting off of it now. Um, the other thing we learned with building this library was that your windows in the interior and probably the exterior should be as high as standard library shelving. Now I say the library shelving, um, the shorter shelves, not the tall ones um, in the adult collection, but the shorter shelves in the juvenile collection, these are I believe 42 inches high. So your windows should probably be 42 or 43 inches high so that you can comfortably put shelving underneath it up against a wall if you need to. Um, that was one of the challenges we had with our program room on the outside. The windows were a little bit shorter, so we had to invest in a different kind of shelving instead of using one of these. So just one of my suggestions. I wanted to make sure that I threw in here a couple of things that I learned um, through the nuts and bolts of moving. And then the third thing I wanted to mention um, was to have a contingency plan, a contingency for your landscaping. So this building is away from the county complex and we have a separate contract for our lawn mowing service and our cleaning contract. They are separate outside contractors because we are not in the county complex. We found that it was more cost efficient to do it this way instead of having Public Works come out and take care of this building. Okay, back to the children's room. So. We, I mentioned bumps and bruises both physical and on the ego in the description for this program. So one of the things I wanted to talk about was the um, conversation between our director and our staff about the setup of our book browsers. These book browsers were new to this library. We didn't have them before. We used the regular um, shelving for our picture books. But with the new library, our director had seen these and thought that they would be a great option and they would make it easier for children to search for books. So these are in alphabetical order. There is space on the top, almost like um, you can browse records, and then there's space on the bottom. So we went through a whole conversation of how should this be set up? How should the books be arranged? And then should we use the bottom shelving if that's more difficult to see. We had to use the bottom shelving because our collection was too large. We have five book browsers um, for our picture books. So the discussion was whether to put the books facing forward where the spine isn't showing, so facing upright where you can kind of just browse through them, or if we should have the spine showing. After much discussion, we ended up having the spine facing up so you could read the title and it would help with alphabet alphabetization. And these, um, my staff had to be convinced that these were a good thing. Um, they were a little apprehensive about it. Um, not all change is good, but change is necessary. Um, so this yeah, was one of the it's things. A new way of, it's a new way of having to look, you know, to display and give, give your your kids here a oh, way to get through the books. But I do like that because, you know, flipping through them, like you said, like record albums or um, I can see how that would be fun and uh, just make it more interesting. Look at the covers of the books too as you're flipping oh, through. Yeah, because yeah, that is, you know, like in, in many library displays and bookstores, they have you, you know, face, you know, front face some of those books to catch people's eyes. Well, and if you need to look at a book that's on a regular shelf, you have to pull it out. Mm -hmm. um, and we have baskets around the library, so if you can't, find the spot where the book was you put it in the basket um, this way they can browse and look and they're not pulling all of those books out which still have to be reshelved so it does cut yeah. down on that a little bit the other thing is they're on wheels oh, so nice. okay. we can push them up against the wall we've had to utilize I've mistakenly double booked our program room many times <laughs> and I've had to commandeer the children's room <laughs> for programs um, so the nice thing is they're all on wheels the shelving unit that you see here on the right hand side with the manipulatives and the um, 
those books that are on there are books that are um, there are board books, star books, and some of our most popular things like fairies and um, Legos and Star Wars, things like that. That shelf is also on wheels. So we can literally clear the room if we need to use it. You can totally it's arrange wonderful. it to a whole different arrange, different setup of all of the furniture. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. And sometimes we go in there and things are moved around. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily by us. The cool part about this children's room is it is like the place to be, the destination for a lot of mom's groups. So on Facebook, I'll occasionally see on different mom's groups like, oh, we're going to meet up at the Timberwolf Library and, you know, at this time and then we're going to do lunch. And so it's definitely there are some days this room is completely full. The fact that I got a picture when we were open and there was no one in it was amazing because I wanted to make sure I got a picture with no one in it just so I didn't have to check with sharing pictures of people's children. And because then you can see the room fully and it's awesome. So let's keep moving here. I want to be respectful of everyone's time here. And I'm looking through to make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, the other thing we did, um, we got through our moving process and we were ahead of schedule according to the flowchart that my um, director had made. So occasionally we'd have full days where we had, I had to find things for my staff to do. We caught up on all of our webinars for the products we had on our website, like um, Credo, Literati, um, Find It Virginia, the research topics that we had. Um, so we were able to do those. We Not only that, we switched the audio collection of two of our libraries. We just picked up each collection and flip-flopped them um, so that for people who like to browse and not use the catalog, then they could find that material and hopefully it would boost circulation, which it did a little bit. Um, so we had to re-sticker everything and move it. So we did that for a couple of days as well. And then in between, people took time off. There was the holidays and everything. So it was about three weeks, I believe, three or four weeks worth of work um, that we had. And let's see, I covered that. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I touched on everything that Rachel gave me. So one of the things she mentioned was, we've been here two years. We're still figuring out what works and what doesn't and what needs to change. That also depends on your staff. We've had some turnover, so we have new staff members. So preferences are different. So the workroom, the circulation desk, those things are always evolving to see what works for everyone. And one of the things she loved was being able to work with the different departments, Public Works and IT, and spending time with them um, and getting to know them. All right. So this is another view of the program room. The program room has a little kitchenette and a bathroom, and we make that available to the public after hours if they schedule it, fill out an application, and get a entry code. We have a keypad on our door so we can give them an entry code. The two doors that lead into the library, we lock them at the end of the night. One of them has an entry code as well for staff so they don't have to use a key. The other one we will unlock as we need to throughout the day if there's a big program. But this is wonderful so that we have a meeting space in this area of the county available after hours. And I was looking at the stats for our meeting space in the last couple of years, last two years that we've been here. And we're, <clears throat> excuse me, my gosh. <clears throat> We're averaging 75 reservations in three rooms for the library every month for use for tutors, library programs, meetings, etc. And then about 45 to 50 on average per month for the community for these three rooms. We're also averaging about 6,000 um, patrons a month. I did not check our circulation, but I know it had been the first year and a half it was up by 30%, which is right in line with the expectation of a new building is usually your circulation does increase by 30%. Okay, this is a view from the front door before all of our shelving was set up. So our circulation desk was on the right. So this is kind of like the physical view of the blueprint behind it, that you can kind of see everything that the box is covering on the, the page. This is what it looks like in real life. 
Um, so we use a lot. So Nan Carmack, our former director, was or is an artist. So she has a um, really good eye for colors. So she picked all of the colors. Um, so there's a lot of blues and oranges. The carpet has little tidbits of all of these colors as well. And it really fits with the park. So it feels like the building has always been here, that it should be sitting in this spot. So it really um, kind of blends with the nature around us. And we talked about our book carts. It went a little bit out of order here, but I really wanted to be able to kind of just conversationally talk to everybody. Um, and then as you have questions, mm -hmm. just let me know. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, anybody, if you have questions, type them in so you can get them answered um, while we're on the line here right now with Dana. Type into your questions section. <laughs> so these are our computers. Um, this was a new product that the furniture company we went through had um, put out around the time that we were building, so we thought they were awesome. This was one of those learning processes. So there's three computers on this side, three on the other side, I believe, two and then one on that second set. Mm -hmm. um, they really didn't work that great because the electricity in the floor was put in backwards. So, and that's something you're gonna you're gonna find you're gonna have hiccups in design or in the building, and you kind of just have to roll with it. So, what we ended up doing instead of having these two aisles, now we have three circular um, stations. So they basically reconfigured these with a few extra pieces. And they were able, oh, excuse me, the wind is blowing. We're on the top of a hill in the park, so the <laughs> wind is blowing. It just blew my door open. Oh, my. <laughs> I looked over. I'm like, oh, hello. Um, so the computers now are in three circular, or I would call them circular, triangular, um, but there's three of them. But and they still use those have, backs, the, the same backs cause, that are yeah. behind these? Yes, they had to buy some extra pieces to kind of configure, but mm. those backs are, um, what are they made of? They're like a corkboard. Mm. So we say, it's very, and very um, some, uh, type of that I hadn't seen before. I like it. <laughs> it was a new product when um, we opened. It, we were the first place. I was told later on when they came back to move things around, we were the first place they installed them. Uh -huh. So with that too comes delay because they're learning how to put them together. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So they had gotten training on how to put them together, the guys from the company, um, but we were the first official spot that they were putting you them together. What, what furniture company are they from? Um, I know it was through Harris oh, okay. in Roanoke. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly which company Harris got this from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. <clears throat> that was kind of outside of what I was doing. I was kind of in charge of the on the ground part with moving all the books. Um, there, the nice thing too is we utilized a lot of local business. We use Fast Signs for all of our signs. They're a local veteran owned company. Um, we used a local woodworking company, their name is escaping me right now, to do the end caps that you see in the background there. Our shelving isn't identical. There's three or four of one kind and two of another. So we put all the end caps on to make everything look uniform. So you can't really tell unless you're really looking, um, but it does definitely dress it up quite a bit. Uh, let me see here. Okay, let's move on to the grand opening. This was amazing. We had a soft opening on a Friday night on January 8th for all of our donors and all of our prominent guests and people of the community, which was wonderful. Um, I'm an introvert, so I say wonderful, but by the end of this weekend, I was exhausted. So Sunday I hid in my house all day. But for the time being, it was wonderful. And it was really great to see everyone um, coming into the library for the first time. So to give you an idea, this is about half of the people <laughs> who came to the library for the opening. Um, the parking lot was full. Um, everyone was so patient waiting outside. It was cold and chilly that day. It was January 9th in Virginia, which is like 40 and rainy. It's at least, I mean, it's not like the Northeast or Nebraska where it's freezing, I'm sure, in January. Um, but we had at least a thousand people come through that day which is quite a bit for one day. Um, capacity for the library is 200. So we had, um, actually the door count at the time hadn't been installed yet. So there are a few little things we still had to do. So we weren't able to capture an exact number. 
but everyone that came, it was interesting. They weren't just there to see the library and see all of these great, wonderful new things that we did. They were there to use the library. So we quickly realized that people were bringing their books back. They were coming to check out books. There were people on the computers when all of these people were crowded around them. So they didn't, they didn't want to just come and look at it, which was really awesome. They were patiently or not so patiently waiting for us to reopen so that they could utilize it, which is the whole purpose. I mean, it's the whole purpose of building the building. Mm -hmm. um, so let me, so the other nice thing about January 9th, um, 2016, when we opened, it was the birthday of the daughter of um, Judy Gerlinger, her daughter, Janelle. It was her birthday. It was also our children's programming manager, um, Valinda Trent's birthday. So we sang happy birthday and we had a really awesome grand opening. We had a poet, um, Bunny Goodjohn, come and speak. And then we opened the doors for everyone. And this is the this vantage point is from the very back so the front doors are all the way in the back center of the picture this is just a small snapshot of all of the people who were there we set up um, a tech center in the back because we quickly realized that people were indeed there to use the library so we set up a tech center to go over some of our e-resources our circulation department was bombarded i at one point just picked up my laptop and went out and parked myself to be an extra circulation um, checking uh, people out because it was just so busy. Um, I have about 200 pictures from this day and every picture looks like this. People are using the library. There are dozens of people everywhere. The children's room was being used and crowded. The program room had refreshments all um, purchased through local businesses um, and that was crowded all day long. We were open from 10 to 6 which were our um, Saturday hours. When we moved to this library, I was able to increase our hours by eight a week. We had two late or seven a week. We had two late nights and I was able to increase Saturday hours from four to eight. Um, so we were able to serve more people. And this is a picture of myself and my director, Nan Carmack, at the end of the day when we closed the doors and we were finally done. <laughs> I actually almost wore this top today. Survive. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of, yeah, that was kind of the mindset. Um, about a month or two after this, Nan took a much needed month off and went to Ireland. She oh. was working on her doctorate and oh. opening this building and painting the main library all in the same year. Wow. <laughs> so it was a much needed break, I'm sure. So yes, does anyone have any questions? I realize I did not include a slide with my contact information, um, but I can quickly pull that up if you would like it. Let me go sure, ahead and do yeah. that for you. Um, yeah, so if anybody does have any questions while we're on the line right now, go ahead and type them into your questions section. Um, let us know if you want to know anything more about how they did the move here or any more about the history of the library. Um, <coughs> oh, there it is. Get. <clears throat> there she is. <clears throat> All right, there we go. There's my contact information. <laughs> yeah. Or you can always call or email Dana afterwards. Yeah. So it didn't look like anybody typed anything while we were while we you were talking, but um yeah, we still have some time here. Um if you do have anything you're typing in right now, go ahead. We will we don't get cut off right at the top of the hour again. Um we'll wait as long as we need to for you to answer any questions or anything. Um, is is really awesome, Dana. I just want to say, I want to say myself to see such a huge success. <laughs> um, there's such a range of um, communities supporting their libraries, like like to no end, like yours. Ten years to get it, get the actual building they wanted, all the way to the ones that don't want to vote for any levies or anything to do with the end of the libraries, and and there's you know battles for it and everything in between. So, and I'm glad when I hear the stories about the ones that are supportive and that the library is full of people, um, not just the, like at the other yeah, grand opening, not just the ones curious to see what it looks like, but hi, we're your regulars and we need our books. We need our services. We're here. <laughs> we're ready exactly. to start using the library again. You know, to us, it's not the party. It's our regular come and use the library. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I won't say that um, we 
had smooth sailing going through the voting process. Um, I'm not very, I'm not a very political person. It's not very often that I go to um, some of these meetings, and that's just from a personal standpoint. Um, mm -hmm. But the meetings that we did attend, where they were voting on the library and okaying the funding, not only was um, myself and my entire staff there, but several members of the community and the friends made an appearance. So we mm -hmm. took up a few aisles <laughs> in Ashling, yeah. the meeting for sure. Yeah. But we did have, um, well, I mean, we're here. We had majority support at the time that we needed. Mm -hmm. And you said even with the um, downturn in the economy in mm -hmm. general. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we scaled down. We saw the need. So we scaled down what they were looking for. Yeah. And that's great. You don't have to just it's because things change doesn't mean you just got to throw it out, you know, and say, well, I guess we can't. No. We well, and working. this was something that was very timely also because the HUD grant that we received was going to expire. Oh, so if yeah. we didn't get the funding and the voting, um, if we didn't get the vote through county government, then it was going to expire. So there was a little bit of an urgency there to where we didn't know where that HUD grant money was going to come from had mm. it expired. If, it, if but, you lost it, yeah. Exactly. So, but like I said, we had the support that we needed at the time that we needed it. And for the most part, the citizens in our county have always been very, very supportive. And we've had generally good support um, from the county in general and from our board of supervisors. Great. That's awesome to hear. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody's typing in any desperate questions they need to ask you now, but that's okay. There is Dana's info. Please do email and call her if you do have any more questions about their move. Do um, you have any last words, Dana, before we wrap up for the morning? I don't think so. Like the only thing I mentioned was if you saw something in a picture you were curious about that had nothing to do with this, feel free to contact me. Yes, I'd there love is to talk about background and other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, then, thank you very much. I'm going to pull back um, to my screen here. So thank you very much, everyone, for attending this morning. Thank you, Dana, for joining us and presenting on here. There we go. Um, that will wrap it up for this morning's show. Uh, let's see. We should be seeing. There we go. Yeah. That will wrap it up for this morning's show. Um, we will be, we have been recording the show, and if you go to our main page here, um, Encompass Live, uh, um, so far Encompass Live is the only thing called this on the internet. If you use your search engine of choice, Google, wherever, and type in Encompass Live, you'll find our webpage. These are our upcoming shows, and right underneath them, as I told you I was going to show you, this is where our archives are, so you can click here to see our archives. They come up with the most recent ones first. So uh, the one for today will be posted here at the top of the page, should be available later this afternoon, uh, as long as YouTube cooperates with my uploading and processing of it. And we just like this, we'll have a link to the recording. Um, Dana, you'll send me your slides? Yes. Yep, and we'll have the presentation available too for everyone. And I'll email everybody who attended this morning and who registered today to let you know that the recording is available and it'll be just up there for everyone. Um, this is the 10th year of Encompass Live, which is a little stunning to me, but it is. <laughs> so we ha and we have all of our archives here going back to the beginning of the show. So I just want to let you know that um, I'm going to scroll down here if you get a little, you know, seasick from this. Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the very beginning, January 2009 was when we first started. So we do have all of our archives in here that you can watch. Watch. All of them are on YouTube with their presentations and links to websites and things. But do be aware of that, that there may there will be some um, older information, some out of date information in here, some um, programs that have already happened. But we're librarians. We archive everything. So that's what we have here for you. Um, but everything is dated. So you'll know exactly when it was actually live broadcast. Um, there is also a search feature here in our archives. So if you're looking for a particular topic, a particular presenter, this will search the title, um, the description field, and the, the this presenter field. So you can search for a particular um, session if you're interested. Looking for something specific. So that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is uh, teen services without teen spaces, innovative programming. This is uh, another remote presenter for us from Iowa, just next door to Nebraska. Um, Madeline Jarvis is at the Marion Iowa Public Library, and she's going to talk about um, how they um, had to get creative with their teen programming because they did not have specifically dedicated spaces for that in their library. So 
So please do sign up and join us for that show next week and any of our other shows we have listed here, for April and going into May. Um, I'm always, I'll am always i be adding more to the schedule here, so keep an eye out for more of our May presentations being confirmed right now. Um, also, Encompass Live is on Facebook. We have a link here to our Facebook page. Um, so if you are a big Facebook user, please do give us a like. You'll get notifications. Here's a reminder that I had sent out this morning about logging into today's show on the fly. Um, if you, um, when our recordings are available, we post them here, linked here to let you know. So if you are a um, heavy Facebook user, give us a like and keep up with what we're doing. Other than that, that wraps up for this morning's show. Thank you very much for attending this week's Encompass Live, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.